is a Procreate tutorial for photo manipulation after the recent updates. So the different stages of photo manipulation involve importing photos onto separate layers. So first you gather your photo reference by taking your own photos as well as by getting public domain or copyright free images online. The photos I used here are from Pexels.com, which has all public domain images you're allowed to use without even accrediting the photographers for whatever you'd like. So before I started this, I gathered all this photo reference from places that I knew I was allowed to use them. Remember, you can always take your own photos and often that's best, but obviously you don't always have access to a good camera or to the subject matter you'd like to use in your art. You can use public domain images from sites such as pixabay.com, unsplash.com, paxels.com, and openphoto.net. There's also others. You can also pay for photos you'd like to use, but really there's a lot of free photos out there and I advise you also take your own photos whenever possible. After you've imported the photos and have them on their own layers, you go in and you delete all the parts of the photo you don't want to use, as you see me doing here. The main way is to use the selection tool on Freeform and to draw out everywhere you'd like to select and then delete. For larger areas, I advise you use the cut option, which took me a while to figure out. You use a three finger swipe, not tap, but swiping down, and the little menu comes up that gives you options. One of those options will be cut. That will be the option to delete everything you just selected. Set the eraser tool to a type of airbrush. I use the medium or soft airbrush on the eraser. I make it very small and I zoom in close, getting the fine details and edges that aren't easy to get with just the selection method. You go in and you clean up all the edges. It doesn't often have to be perfect, even for proper artworks you're selling, but it should be pretty good. I find it's very important to get it to look good enough for you, but to not overstress about everything being absolutely perfect. The most important thing is to do it so that you're still having fun and that you like the final result. Remember, you can also use these techniques to do overlays over previously painted things. So you can do part digital painting, part photo manipulation, which is often referred to as matte painting. This is often done to add texture and certain elements into digitally painted artworks. Often, when you do this, you lower the opacity on that layer so that you can have some of the detailing in from the photos, but it doesn't overtake the painted parts you did. The example I'm doing here is a pure photo manipulation, but it's just done to show you what you can do and how to use the techniques in Procreate, rather than showing the one and only way of doing something. You can, for example, use real photographs of rocks to add rock texture onto rocks that you've painted digitally and lower the opacity so that it's more subtle. Or you could add wings onto a figure you painted yourself by stealing them from a bird photo. Remember to adjust the angle of things so it fits correctly. I'll be doing a separate tutorial on photo manipulation used for matte painting after this at some point in the future and show these more subtle techniques. But for a quick overview, you can use the distort and warp selection tools to try to match the perspective, as well as use the perspective tools in Procreate to actually figure out what the perspective is in the background you either painted or brought a photo in for. The most important thing overall here is to make sure that everything is in the right spot and the right perspective. After you've done that, make any corrections. Here I'm using the liquify tool, a very useful tool that was recently added to the Procreate app in the new update. Liquify allows you to do actual techniques that are often referred to as photoshopping or digitally manipulating photographs. I'm also using different brush tools. I added in leaves back into the trees after warping them with Liquify a bit back into shape with a specialized brush tool that I got for free on a forum where you can get free Procreate brushes. There's a lot of free Procreate brushes available so I advise you look for them online. You can also use the adjustments menu to make things lighter, darker, or different colors. And you can also use specialized layer modes, such as multiply to make things darker and look more like their shadows, but slightly see-through. I'm using the push tool to modify her body, the pinch to make her arms smaller, and the expand to enlarge her bust. This is actually often what you think of as photoshopping. That's why the liquify tool is so amazing. And it was recently added to Procreate. There's a lot you can do, and you can also use this liquify tool with things you painted yourself. 
Now I'm subtly adjusting the lighting to actually fit the background better. By using a multiply layer above and a clipping mask, it makes it only paint where she is on the layer below. But the multiply layer makes things slightly darker but also translucent. This allows you to paint things that look very much like shadows on a layer above something and easily adjust the light. This can be used for photo manipulation as well as normal digital painting. It's a very useful tool to use a clipping mask layer over top of something you're painting on on Multiply to add shadows. I also advise you do a layer underneath figures that are touching the ground and label that shadows using a Multiply setting to paint the shadows in, which I'll be doing later. Another layer above that set to normal mode and also clipping mask to her is done to add rim lights and highlights around the edge of her body. I'm adding shadows and rim lights around her because the background is more lit from behind. So I'm trying to make her fit into the scene better. I'm also smudging out brush strokes to make things look smoother and more natural in any areas that I think look too much like a painting and not as much like a photograph. If my shadows aren't dark enough, like in this case, I duplicated the layer and then I can change the opacity on the duplicated layer until I like the adjustment. Here on its own layer, I'm selecting areas and quickly painting in colors with a paintbrush tool set to a not completely opaque opacity. I'm trying to correct everything so that I am happy with the way it looks. I'm just showing how you can digitally paint over photographs, although I could have done an even better job, but it's still a good job, to show how you can change the color of clothing quite quickly. You have to also consider adjusting the shadows to make things fit into the same scene correctly. On its own layer, I done a dress, where I selected the shape of the dress and then quickly filled it in with a color. I adjusted the opacity of this layer so you could still see through to the pattern underneath. If you don't like the pattern, you can completely digitally paint over it and erase the pattern. You can also smudge out things on the actual layer of the photograph using the smudge tool set to different settings. I'm adding rim lighting here. The other thing you can remember that you can do is to get specialty brushes with texture, skin texture and cloth fabric texture. As I said, you can find lots of free brushes online. You can also make your own. And you can use these to add texture back into things if you find your digital paint brushes are making things look too smooth and unnatural. This is also a great tip for painting realistic digital paintings without any photo manipulation as well. Getting lots of different brushes and using them is a good option. Some people think you should use limited brushes, but I think the more the merrier, as long as it accomplishes the task. I did a layer above the eagle here and clipping masked it. I smudged out a pale creamish yellow, and as you can see, I adjusted the layer mode so it was soft light. This added the color in from the background of the sky onto the eagle's back to make it fit into the scene better. Here on the rocks, I'm also adding in highlights with that creamy yellow tone from the sky, and I also had a multiply shadow layer here where I darkened some of the shadows. I went back in over top of the yellow highlights I added in in order to deepen some of the shadows of the cracks so they looked more like they were actual cracks in the scene. Here I'm adding in details into the hair. I'm painting more of the hair in and fixing the edges because some of the hair detail was lost when I cut her out from the background of the original photo. This was done with, you guessed it, a specialized hair brush I downloaded for free. You can also possibly make your own or use the default brushes that come with Procreate, but I found a lot of really good brushes for free online that I find extremely useful. I also created my own custom stamp tools, such as this paw print one, which you can set to different opacities and stamp on. You can use the selection and warp tools to make it fit more perfectly with the three-dimensional form, or you can just stamp it right on and keep going. If you want to adjust the lighting in a very subtle way, I advise you use a soft airbrush or other soft brush tool and put it on very low opacity, working slowly in layers. You can also look at your piece overall and zoom in and out in order to add further details to make it look better. Here I added Angora Texture Brush, which is a type of cloth texture. This is the digital time lapse recorded in Procreate rather than the other version you saw, which was my screen recording version. Another tip I advise is bringing in a saved photo rather than duplicating a layer for highest quality, but if the quality doesn't need to be maximum, you can just use the duplication option. The other thing to remember is that you can save your corrected photo with a clear background by turning off all the layers but your photo, including making the background layer invisible and saving as a PNG or a TIFF. 
Then you can save it with a clear background, which is a really useful option if you're going to reuse the art you cleaned up. You can do this for elements of pure digital paintings too, such as by saving a dragon on a separate layer with a clear background to paint different backgrounds for it in the future. Remember to experiment with all these options and tools. I'm still learning what the new updates to Procreate have brought, and I'm still working on many different options for creating different artworks digitally. In general, I do more digital painting with a slight amount of matte painting, but photo manipulating is also a good option to have in your toolkit. So I advise you tinker around, try different things, look up tutorials, and practice, practice, practice. New video every week, hopefully on Wednesdays, but sometimes it gets delayed. I hope you look forward to the videos in the future. Bye!